one of the things that uh, you need to uh, deal with is motors so this is true for experiments with pumps because most pumps are uh, actuated or the power from the pump is taken from a motor so typically in uh, industry application for pumps we usually use uh, AC motor this is also an example of a motor there. so this is a DC motor it's very small so this is another example of a uh, DC motor the thing that makes your electric fan move is also an AC motor now that we know the many applications of an AC and DC motor, let us now look at the important things about it. So again, this is our motor. This is a DC motor. There are two things that we would like to know about the DC motor in terms of its uh, mechanical characteristics. One is the speed. So how fast you know the shaft of the motor or its spindle or whatever you call it spins the units are sometimes revolutions per minute revolutions per second regions per second so it depends on what you are most comfortable with but any unit should do another thing that we'd like to look at in our motor in the mechanical aspect is the torque so the torque is how much force you know over a length of arm the motor can deliver uh, the easiest to describe a torque is when you try to twist something so example this is a pen so if I if I try to twist it you know in the opposite side whatever that twisting thing that is experienced by this pen when I when I try to twist that that's what we call the torque so when you combine those two, speed and torque, you get the power. So I have a simple setup here. Here we have a power supply connected to the outlet. And then, and then the power is uh, wired to this speed controller unit. And then from the speed controller, controller unit, we have our DC motor. So we will measure the speed using this. This is a photo tachometer. So when you press this button here, it has uh, it's emitting a light, and then inside it, it also has a light sensor. So what it does is it senses the light sensor senses the reflective part of your shaft. So if you notice in this shaft, we've attached a reflective tape. This one. So every time that reflective tape faces our light, it, the light bounces back and then the photo sensor is able to sense it so let's try to measure that so it's giving us about 95.2 revolutions per minute yeah it's in rpm so if we can increase the speed it should give us a much faster speed 751 revolutions per minute Now it's about 109.4 revolutions per minute. So the next parameter we need to determine or to measure in a motor is the torque. So the torque is more complicated to measure as compared to your speed. And usually torque is measured over a load. So for instance, if I was to attach this paddle to this motor and then we run the motor, uh, the paddle is basically used to move the air. It's like a fan. Now what I want to do is to measure the torque between the motor and the paddle. So one of the things that you can do is you could attach something in between. Example, I attach this thing and then attach it to your motor like this now if this red thing is able to measure the torque between the motor and the paddle then we're good to go so these devices are often called torque transducers or torque meters 
The problem is, these devices are very expensive. So another easier way to measure torque is by using the concept of uh, reaction of uh, forces. If you remember in our thermodynamics, in any force, there's always a equal and opposite force. It is also the same with a motor. So, for instance, if this paddle is rotating in this direction, right, and then the air is providing resistance to the paddle, so that means the motor is ex also experiencing that kind of resistance. If we let the motor run freely without holding it, while this is spinning in this direction, the motor will tend to spin on the opposite direction with equal but opposite torque as our paddle. Okay, so if we're able to capture that torque in the motor when it is spinning, then we can also measure the torque. To demonstrate that, I have this simple experiment set up for you. So what I have here is a, is a DC motor. This is a DC motor. Now you notice the DC motor, this is its casing. It is free to rotate. See? While this is its shaft. So this is where the power is being transmitted. So you could imagine the paddle is attached here or the pump or anything that we want to power is attached here in this shaft. What I also did was to connect a lever to the casing of the motor and this lever is going to push against our weighing scale. So the motor is simply powered by this device. This is a USB power supply that can be adjustable. It is set to 6 volt. So if we power it on, we should see some kind of a reading in our digital scale. So I'll turn on the scale. It is 0. Position the motor like this. What I want you to do is to observe the reaction of the motor once I turn on the power. 3, 2, 1, power. See, you see those... You see that reaction? So the, 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 the shaft is spinning on this direction and the body wants to spin on that direction. Alright, so right now we're reading zero. Now the moment that I try to squeeze or try to stop the shaft from spinning, not really stop it but applying a bit of load, try to observe the reading on the scale. There, it's in, the reading is increasing. The more tight I squeeze it, the more force it is able to apply on the weighing scale. From the center of your shaft up to this point, that is your lever arm. So the force multiplied by this length is the torque. This is probably about, uh, let's say, 10 centimeter. So our lever arm is 10 centimeter. Okay, so if I apply a load, actually around, around 50 grams, then when you calculate it, the torque is actually 50 times 10, 500 gram cm of torque. So again, the unit of torque will be a unit of force multiplied by a unit of length. So that's how you measure torque using this technique wherein you make the casing of your motor floating. Allow it to move freely. And it is basically held up against a scale, weights, or any other device that can measure force.